Update part of our continued coverage of the Riverside terror attack and it has been 22 hours since that attack uh, took place but uh, we have uh, seemingly good news at this hour. Good afternoon, my name is Mark Masai. I'm Smriti Vidyarthi. It is over. The siege is over. This, this is the government's statement on what has been a long, nerve-wracking and horrific stretch of hours for people who were at the 14 Riverside Drive scene of Kenya's latest terror attack and their families, friends and many others. Deaths have been confirmed. The injured are being attended to in an operation that saw hundreds evacuated to safety prior to the end of the siege. The president has confirmed 14 innocent people were killed as the Kenya Red Cross Secretary General Abbas Goulet said that over 700 people were rescued. And now the attention is uh, firmly on uh, the uh, Chiromo, Mo, at the Chiromo Mortuary, where most of the family members and friends are gathering to confirm the uh, whereabouts of their loved ones or the state of their loved ones. But we are also live uh, at the 14 Riverside Drive, which has been uh, the focus of attention for hours now since the attack. And Kennedy Moravi can give us an update of what is going on there. There was an update earlier, but what is happening there now? Well, Mark and Smitty, what we can tell you from what is happening here at the 14 Riverside Drive is that there is still evacuation that is going on and we have been seeing ambulances coming out of the particular place and also police officers who actually led this operation. I've also been leaving this particular place, leaving the general service officers to continue with what is believed to be combing up the area. As what, has said, what was said here earlier on with the Cabinet Secretary for Interior, that is Fred Matiang, is saying that we are now done with phase one as you have said in the introduction that yes the siege is over but that was only phase one of what has been happening happening and we are now getting into phase two and phase two includes leaving the work into the directorate of criminal investigations to investigate what might have happened where were they and so that kenyans can get answers and answers which they will seemingly be wanting to know what really transpired where did they come from why did we not get in this information as a country before and all these questions that are really lingering at this particular point also we do understand at this particular point that everything that is happening right there is is privileged because even the media who are trying to get uh, even past that grey vehicle that is there, they are being pushed back. They do not want us to get any, anywhere near that particular point and all the media houses, be it international or local, are set at where we are at this particular point. We have also been seeing the, the KDF, that is the Kenya Defence Forces officers, they have been coming here and they, they, we have seen them leave periodically within a very short time after this operation was done. Another thing that we've also seen is that the paramedics are are now being allowed in and they are also uh, trying to get what the information is and also trying to comb up that place that has been a crime scene it has been designated a crime scene <coughs> according to cabinet secretary fred matiangi who say that it will still remain an active crime scene for, for for the police to continue with their investigations. We have seen some photos circulating on social media that are now believed to be some of the assailants who had made their way into this complex yesterday at around three, three o'clock yesterday, that is 21 hours ago. And yes, here everything seems to be calm, but police officers and heavy security presence is here at this particular point just to try and know what is happening. The police are also calling on journalists and people, the people who have turned out here just to get uh, first-hand information on what is happening. And uh, yes, this is Raila Odinga, the leader of opposition who has just made his way here wanting to know and getting the information first and on what could have happened. And uh, not just that, I can also see another contingent coming which, is also, which we also do believe is members of the opposition and probably members of the NASA team who are coming to get a first hand of what might have happened and probably they will be giving, uh, they will be giving a statement after they have seen what transpired inside there. But this is the team and they are coming to find out what just might have transpired at this particular area. This... Uh, these are some of the politicians who have come 
with Raila Odinga and uh, one of them I have uh, Raila Odinga is the only person that we could we could identify then and all these others uh, so even if their cars their windows are down we could not identify who they are but probably we would be wanting to hear from Raila Odinga what he has seen and we might be wanting to hear his statement probably on how he will be collaborating with the government and the opposition coming together the, like we saw in 2013 just to make sure that the country is united at this particular point and give a united message that will make sure that these people who came into the country trying to tamper with their sovereignty are going to be vanquished. Yes, President Uhuru Kenyatta said that they were vanquished but but yet again, we still Kenyans to come. We Kenyans are being called upon to come together and continue with the day-to-day -to -day activities without fearing, as the security forces are in shape and will be doing everything to contain what is now turning out to be a terror attack. Back to you, Mark and Smith in studio. All right. NTV's Kennedy Moredi, thanks very much. Coming to us live from number 14, Riverside Drive, Kennedy has been covering the event uh, since morning. More from him later as we get more developments, but at this point we can confirm that there is still plenty of activity taking place at the location. According to Kennedy, there is some sort of evacuation still going on, although the Secretary General uh, Abbas Goulet of the Red Cross did say that uh, all um, civilians had already been evacuated and just a few moments ago uh, Raila Odinga the leader of the opposition believed to have driven in to the venue with uh, various other politicians. Shortly after leaving the Chiromo mortuary where he was and where Charity Mwangi is on standby to give us an update from the activities there it's going to be quite busy now uh, as things move to that area from the Dusit D2 uh, premises. Now hundreds of people were rescued from the Dusit complex since the terror attack late afternoon yesterday. Among the rescued were NTV journalist Silas uh, Apollo and Dixon Onyango. Here's uh, Sharon Baranga with her report. NTV journalist Silas Apollo and Dixon Onyango were going about their daily activities at the Dusit complex along Riverside Drive. <laughs> They were here on assignment, and a few minutes after they arrived, all hell broke loose. First, it was an explosion. <laughs> then gunshots rendered the air. In the confusion, they separated as they scampered for safety. They were to be rescued more than 12 hours later. The last 12 hours you were in a washroom. How many people were you in that washroom? There were those that had seven people. There were those that had five. Okay. And then, you know, it was mixed gender and stuff, so it was quite uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it's, that is where our lives were. I mean, you know, that's, that's I think, the safest we could have okay. been in. Yeah. Okay. We're glad to see you. Um, where you were, how many more people are remaining, or were they able to get everyone out? They've been evacuating guys on each floor, uh -huh. so I think they started with the ground. I think our building was probably the last one, because it's been happening, I think, since 4 o'clock, I think, okay. Uh, okay. the rescue team started. Mm -hmm. So I think ours was the last one, so we were on the first floor. I think on the first floor, I think everyone was evacuated because okay. then they would move from room to room looking for guys and stuff. The horrific event started at about 3.30 p.m. when gunmen struck at the complex. So far, security forces have managed to rescue a number of people who are trapped inside. At, I was with eight guys. We were at the at some form of a conference center, a conference room, sorry. So we stayed there for a while, and um, it was quite nerve-wracking, if I may say. Relatives and friends of people in the complex camped outside, as the area has been cordoned off. <laughs> Their only mode of communication being exchange of text messages as they pray and hope for the best. The 14 Riverside Drive complex houses, the five-star Ducit D2 hotel and several offices 
security forces who obtained a map of the building from its administrators before moving in also evacuated people trapped in adjacent buildings. You'll be fine, huh? Yeah. The Inspector General of Police, Joseph Boynet, also reported that by 8.30 p.m. last night, six of the seven floors had been secured. Currently, several people are receiving treatment at MP Shah, Aga Khan, Kenyatta, and Avenue Hospitals. Most of them have shrapnel and gunshot wounds. Sharon Baranga, NTV. And we join uh, the many over 700 who had uh, their relatives and friends uh, rescued in celebrating the same as our colleagues at Dixon Oyango and uh, the very own Silas Apollo who are now uh, getting some form of rest as you would imagine after being held there for over 12 hours and uh, now as uh, the activity and focus changes uh, as we were told earlier by the CS of Interior it's uh, the phase one that is the active operation and engagement with the assailants is over and now it's into the criminal investigation investigations phase now a lot of focus from family and friends will be headed elsewhere that's right mark while several are uh, relieved that their loved ones have been rescued it is a completely different story for a number of families who have lost their loved ones let's take you live to the chiromo mortuary where ntv's charity mwangi has the latest charity what can you tell us Yes, we are still here at the Chiromo Mortuary and we are continuing to receive families here who are seeking information on whether or not their family members were caught in the terror attack that happened yesterday. The process is being made as simple as possible because some of the family members are, have been overcome by emotions and they are trying to make the process as simple as possible. Once the family members arrive to this location, they are ushered into the, the tracing area or, or, or rather a desk that has been set up for that purpose and then once they have confirmed that their kin is among those who perished in the incident they are then ushered to uh, a counselling area where counsellors more specifically from the Amani Counselling Centre are, are seated there and they are able to, to reinforce them and then after that the family members are then taken to the inside the mortuary and then that's where they are able to physically identify their family members uh, uh, people who have been affected more so those who profess the Muslim faith continue to insist that the process ought to be done in a speedily manner so that they can be able to get into the business of of giving their family member a befitting send-off in accordance with their religion we have been able to to hear from some of the leaders who've made their way here trying to comfort the families that have been gathered here key in point uh, uh, ODM leader Relo Dinga and key Tui Governor Charity Ngilu, they were here and the message that is being given here is that uh, Kenyans ought to, to be united. Uh, most of the leaders are saying that the, the purpose of ter terrorism is to divide people along religious lines and so they are trying to reinforce members of, of the various communities that have been affected to unite together against a common enemy. Uh, we will be here because the process it seems to be a little bit slow. We saw some of the family members crowding at the entrance of the viewing, body viewing area, and so it, it, it is taking quite some time. We have received confirmation that 13 bodies were received here. Uh, according to the presidential addre address, 14 people perished in the incident, and we cannot confirm where the, where the one body that that is not here at Chiromo Mochari was taken. For now we will continue uh, being here and talking to the family members and for now we hand you back to studio. Thank you Charity for taking us through the process of uh, those 
who might be headed to Chiromo Mortuary and what they can expect. Uh, of course, as you can appreciate, there's a lot of people headed there, so you can just cooperate as much as you can as they support you when you get there. But assistance will get your way. And uh, Sumitri, you were saying earlier, the phase one, that is the engagement, might be over. But for the families, this is now starting. That's a process of getting to know where their family and friends are. That's right. And uh, from the government side, uh, a focus now on phase two, as you mentioned, Mark, and that is investigating the criminal activity. Let's take you now to Mushaga area in Ruaka, where NTV's Leila Mohammed is. Leila, we believe that uh, the area that is Mushaga is where the uh, suspects have been living and perhaps planning this attack in the lead up to uh, the Riverside Drive siege attack rather. Indeed, Mark and Smriti, I can bring you up to speed with what we do know at this hour. We know uh, from our engagements with the residents that uh, this gentleman only identified by one name, that is Farouk, uh, and his wife. Uh, they say it was a young couple. Uh, they were able to secure a house here in March 2018, and they have been living within uh, this gated community for a while now. Uh, those who know them say uh, they were a very cheerful couple. They engaged with people gracefully and they were able to tip the security personnel at the main entrance once in a while uh, and they were very cordial people according to what we have been able to listen into to some of the conversations by many of the residents who we've been able to speak to most of them uh, are telling us they don't want to speak on camera uh, but then again there is one individual who will be able to share with you some of his sentiments uh, later in this uh, broadcast but before then let me just give you a sneak peek into the uh, the room Room number E09, which is a point of interest by security personnel. They have been here since 7.30 p.m. last evening. If I can be able to count the numbers, this is E02. Uh, E09 is that particular house up the hill uh, where we have a red uh, line across uh, the roofing. And if my cameraman can be able to uh, show you much clearly at the main gate, uh, I don't know if that is a... a, a a rock or something of a, of a metal thing that is exactly uh, the house that is under investigation by uh, security personnel here. What we've been able to gather so far is that uh, officers from the flying squad, the DCI, and as well as the key police stations within this area have been here since yesterday. It has been cordoned off. Uh, the yellow tape is as far as anyone can go unless you are a resident of this particular entity and you want to access your home uh, or you're a police officer who's coming in for investigations nobody is being allowed past uh, that yellow line but what we've been expecting since morning is the criminal um scene investigators uh, the crime scene investigators to come here and, and and just do their bit but until now this is one something in the afternoon we have not been able to see them but we are aware there was enough activity here last evening a number of police officers were here uh, we are aware that uh, some material was removed uh, from the house uh, according to our conversations with some of the of the residents, they tell us two women could have been picked up from that particular house uh, in that raid that evening, as well as much more could, that could have happened late into the evening. This conversation having been picked up by some of the community members living within here in their WhatsApp group, and they were able to identify one of the vehicles that was at the Riverside Drive and had been detonated by officers from the bomb squad and they were like, uh, we hope the individual who owns this particular registration number is safe. What they did not know is that it was a, a, a car of interest and uh, was among those that are being sought uh, by the police officers as part of those that were used by the perpetrators of what happened at the Riverside Drive last, the whole of last evening and last night, uh, which the president has officially declared to have been finished. So Mark, the, we, what we're waiting for is just the forensic officers to get here and be able to give us enough information. If we will get access 
to that home then we'll be able to bring you those pictures in our subsequent bulletins or live if we're able to do so but as it now we've been here for the last few hours waiting patiently for anything to happen uh, the officers have been gracious enough uh, just to indulge us but they are on strict orders not to allow anyone uh, to get into that facility uh, but we are aware this is what probably uh, CS Matiangi was saying the second phase of uh, uh, this whole entire activity of the investigations beginning now maybe we'll be looking into uh, DNA samples and uh, fingerprints just to identify exactly who are these people but from our in uh, uh, interrogations of the residents here they say it was a young man and woman a young couple uh, the lady uh, used to dress in a particular style but the gentleman was very cordial uh, one of the residents earlier told us that uh, once uh, she was stranded along this area and was able to carry her along the road using that uh, particular vehicle so there's a lot of information that is coming in that we need to see but uh, the most important will be to get uh, uh, official information from the police officers which is not coming in as uh, we had expected but we will be here uh, waiting for any uh, eventuality that will occur and we'll be able to bring that to you as soon as we get here but before uh, I leave you we will leave you with sentiments from one of the residents who was brave enough to talk to us and just give us a brief description of this individual. Mwenye kununua hii nyumba ambaye namba 9 ambaye huyo terrorist alikuwa naishi alikuwa amekondisha uh, for the last 3 months. Na kwa vile ni nyumba kubwa uh, labda hakukuwa naishi peke yake. Lakini wale wanaweza kudhibitisha hivyo ni kama security guards ambao walikuwa wanamuona akiondoka asubuhi na akirudi jioni. Lakini shughuli zake yeye alikuwa anakuja tu kwa nyumba yake anaingia alafu anatoka. Hakukuwa na shughulika sana na wenyeji wa hapa. Na hata hakuna mtu alikuwa anajua ile kasi anafanya. Alikuwa anakuja tu anaingia kwa nyumba yake alafu asubuhi anaondoka na rudi jioni. An account from one of the uh, neighbors who's uh, a neighbor of one of the suspects and that area is under investigations in the house in uh, question. Let's listen in to what uh, the leader of opposition has to say right now. Come out so that they, they can identify themselves and come out. So at the moment, uh, the figures that we have are tentative. And, and, um, but, but they say they are confident that the those who are still there, who are trapped, their lives will be saved. That's the reason why they're taking all the care uh, to ensure that nobody goes in the harm's way until the whole operation is over. Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, the resolve and the determination of Kenyans to remain united in the midst of challenges and difficulties such as this one that we have gone through before is even stronger than ever before. And we send condolences to the people who are bereaved, who have lost their loved ones, one of them being our colleague. About terrorism. Our security forces have shown the determination to deal with terrorism. And we want to commend their work and to say that we wish them well and we stand with them. And I commend that they acted so fast when this happened that we could have, had it not been their swift action to come here, we would have lost more lives. For those who we lost, it's, it's a really a sad affair for us. But we want to say that we remain united. We want to wish former Prime Minister and His Excellency the President that they remain together so that all of us show a united face to face this disruptive and destructive action of cowardice that they come to kill innocent Kenyans who are going about their business. They are not doing anything that uh, uh, because people have done anything wrong to them. So we just want to say to our security officers led by IG and DCIO that they have done a good job and they should continue doing so. And all of us Kenyans remain united and I heard somebody ask whether 
some of the communities in this country should be thought to be the one causing this and we have said no, no. It cannot be anybody in this community. A lot of people want to say it's about Muslim. Actually, like Governor there, Charity Tingilu, uh, joining uh, the uh, leader of opposition, Relo Dinga, who's giving some of uh, what he's uh, collected or gathered from uh, the scene that uh, is now moving into the second phase now, the process at least. And he says there is some activity still just to make sure that everyone is indeed evacuated, all the rooms are inspected, and everyone is uh, now to safety, although the number right now is up to 700 of those who have been rescued, numbers that we got when the president gave his address. That's right. And in case you missed it, let's now bring you that address one more time. The president spoke earlier this morning and he did clarify that 14 innocent lives have been lost, but he also touched on other issues. Listen in. Fellow citizens, Kenya was yesterday struck by a gang of criminals who hoped to terrorize our people by committing acts of murder and mayhem. I can now confirm that as of about one hour ago, the security operation at Ducid Complex is over and all the terrorists eliminated. As of this moment, we have confirmation that 14 innocent lives were lost through the hands of these murderous terrorists, with others injured. We are grieving as a country this morning, and my heart and that of every Kenyan goes out to the innocent men and women violated by senseless violence. We wish the injured quick recovery, and as a nation, we will continue to pray for them. We are a country governed by laws, rules, and regulations, a country that embraces peaceful coexistence we believe in these principles and values even in the face of adversity. But I must also state that we are also a nation that never forgets those who hurt our children. Even as we regret yesterday's incident, as Commander-in-Chief, I want to commend the quick and effective response by all our fighting teams for neutralizing all the terrorists involved in the attacks. We have dealt with the threat decisively and shown our enemies and the world that we as a country are ready to deal with any threat to our nation. I also take this opportunity to commend the civilians who, look, who looked after one another for every act of evil that led to injury yesterday. There were dozens of acts of compassion, overflowing patriotism, and individual courage. Over 700 civilians were evacuated to safety from the compound since the start of the attack through the early hours of this morning. The operational priority of the security services was first and foremost to safeguard civilian life. They acted swiftly to contain the attackers and methodically evacuate those whose lives were at risk. Emergency crews on site and in hospitals have worked round the clock, and we commend them of our, com of our compassionate, resilient character as a people. 
I also take note of the Kenyans who took to social media to encourage one another, to spread hope, and hold those distorting information to account. Kenyans showed the world the best part of us, brave, patriotic, loving, and unbowed. Fellow citizens, for the last few years, you have invested in our building a strong security system. It showed to great credit yesterday. But we also learned that we can never take anything for granted. In the coming days and weeks, we shall continue the never-ending work of strengthening our systems. From the means available to the security services and judicial arms, we will continue taking every step to make our nation inhospitable to terrorist groups and their networks. I thank our international partners who are showing solidarity in standing with us at this moment, as they always have. Even as we think of our own injuries, we must remember that dozens of countries are also under attack, and that we too must show solidarity in standing with them. This morning, I convened and chaired a meeting of our National Security Council, and I want to say this. We will seek out every person that was involved in the funding, planning, and execution of this heinous act. We will pursue relentlessly wherever they will be until they are held to account. Throughout the breadth of Kenya and in our immediate neighborhood, multiple security efforts are underway to detect, deter, disrupt, and defeat any terrorist operatives or groups. We are also on highest alert and shall remain so. I assure every Kenyan and our foreign visitors that you are safe in Kenya. Fellow citizens, we all have a duty in securing our country. Security is a joint responsibility between citizens and their government. We secure our families, communities, and our nation by building a seamless partnership. We should not allow these people any shelter among us. I urge you to make sure that you inform the police and any authority of any suspicious individuals or actions that you may notice in your day-to-day -day life. I thank all the leaders who have stood up and stated their strong support for our nation at this moment. And I urge all other leaders in every part of our country to condemn in no uncertain terms this evil and make sure to emphasize that it belongs outside our human community. As leaders, we should speak out strongly as we pursue the owners, facilitators, and sympathizers of these groups, knowing that they are an enemy and that we shall pursue and offer them no relief. Fellow Kenyans, we together are in the process of building a new Kenya that is prosperous, secure, and inclusive, and in which every Kenyan has an opportunity to thrive. We will allow no one to derail or frustrate our progress. No one in Kenya today 
or at any time should doubt our resolve. Our resolve to maintain security in our country and in this our determination is unswerving. We have, prepared, we have prevailed and shall always prevail over evil. Let us now go back to work without fear and continue with our task of building our nation. That was the earlier address by President Uhuru Kenyatta over the uh, Riverside Drive attack. He did clarify that he is proud of the rescue and recovery efforts and he did say that Kenya is safe. And that uh, is the underlying message, actually, a lot of commendation to the response, the swift response, response and coordinated uh, response to this security uh, threat and uh, breach to our nation. And uh, yes, an hour later, or just shortly, uh, just after the State House address, the Interior Cabinet Secretary, that is Dr. Fred Matiangi, was now at the scene of the attack. And uh, he said and confirmed after examining uh, the area that the first phase of the security operations at the scene of uh, the Tuesday attack uh, has been concluded successfully. Well, he also said that, uh, as we mentioned earlier, the second phase, which will include the investigations to be handled by the Directorate of Criminal Investigations, has commenced. He spoke as he led a government delegation to the scene of attack. I have come here to thank our men and women in uniform. Our security teams have done a fantastic job and they have done as proud as the country. It's a very unfortunate situation that we find ourselves in today, but we are so proud. Let me tell you, even in these unfortunate circumstances, I have never been so proud of our security teams. The operation was executed very well, swiftly and very precisely. I am also here on behalf of my colleagues uh, from the National Security Council and you had His Excellency the President this morning. This operation has now come to an end in phase one. We are moving now to phase two, which is handling the criminal aspects of this uh, situation. The Director of Criminal Investigations, Mr. Kinoti, takes over from here and the teams, uh, various teams that he needs to work with from this point. We will therefore have to understand, our colleagues from the media, that this still remains an active crime scene we are going to coordinate off and we are going to limit access to this place so that we are able to gather the information we need to gather to move forward uh, in the next steps in what we have to do. We are so grateful. This, this operation has come to an end and we have achieved the objective of ensuring that we secure uh, our people. I want to thank I want the security team, our security team, I want to thank you, I want to thank you, colleagues from the media, for indulging us and those of you, especially those of you for what you have been able to do at this point in time. I want to 